Hello and welcome to our new YouTube tutorial. In this video we're going to be talking about one of the most popular CSS layout modules called Flexbox. When you use CSS it's extremely important to know how to align elements in an easier and flexible way. Before the Flexbox CSS developers were using CSS floats to manage the layout of the web page, but today they are getting less popular because it's not quite a convenient way it needs much effort and sometimes it's even impossible to achieve the needed results. Nowadays CSS allows us to use new modules like CSS Flexbox and CSS Grid. Using them we are able to align elements in a much easier, convenient and flexible way. So what is Flexbox? First of all I want to tell you that it's a new and modern technique which has definitely improved the way of aligning elements on the web page. Again, recently we were using floats to position the elements, but nowadays we don't need to struggle with floats because of the Flexbox. Also, I want to mention that it already has almost full support in all modern web browsers. Officially, Flexbox is called a CSS Flexible Layout Module, and it is used to manage alignment of items, directions and order in the container. It is really useful and helpful because you can achieve needed results with less coding and it's also easy to understand and use. In Flexbox we have separate properties and values for the Flex container and the Flex items. We will go through them. But now I want to talk about one of the main concepts of Flexbox, which is the relationship between the container and its items. In order to make the container flexible, we need to set the display property to Flex or inline flex, but actually inline flex is not really used in the real world. As soon as the container has a display set to flex, then it has an influence on its child items. The next important concept to consider is the directions of how the elements are laid out. According to it we have the main axis, which by default goes from left to right, and cross axis, which is directed from top to bottom. But using different properties and values, those directions could change. I know that for now it sounds a bit complicated, but do not worry, because we're going to use some practical examples to make it clearer for you. So for now, just remember that we have a flex container, flex items, main axis and cross axis. I'm going to separate properties for a container and for flex items. So again, the first thing that we need to do is to set a display property to flex for the container, which then will allow us to use the rest of the properties for the container itself and for its items as well. The next property is flex direction. It defines the direction that container wants to set for its flex items. By default, they are laid out as a row, but also we have a column. Besides that, we are able to use their opposite values, which allow us to reverse the items. Flex wrap property defines if the container aligns flex items in a single or multiple lines. We can use no wrap, which is the default value, and also wrap. We are able to use a shortened way for those two properties and combine them in one property, which is called flex flow. All right. The next one is Justify Content. It allows us to align items along the main axis of the current line of the Flex container. It means that you can align items either at the beginning of the line, or at the center, or at the end of it. Also, you are able to align items with Space Between, Space Around, and Space Evenly. The next we have Align Items. It is similar to Justify Content, but it allows us to align items along the cross axis. I mean, it aligns items in the perpendicular direction. Here you can see the possible values of the align items property. Okay, the last property that we're going to describe regarding flex container is align content. It is similar to align items, but instead of aligning flex items, it aligns the flex lines. Okay, that's all about flex container properties. Just try to remember them and now let's move on and talk about individual flex item properties. The first one is order, which helps us in ordering the items in a row or in a column. And you can do it without changing the place of the elements from HTML. 
Then next is align self property. You can use align self when you want to align individual flex items. Also, we have flex grow, flex basis, and flex shrink properties, which actually allow us to change the size of the flex items, also define the size of them, and also manage to shrink the items. We are able to use those three properties in a shortened way with just flex property. All right. So after a little introduction, I'm going to start to write some coding examples. I have created a new folder on the desktop called CSS Flexbooks, which is empty right now. Let's open it in VS Code. I'm going to create index.html file. Then insert here the basic HTML document. For that, I'm going to use Emmet. Let's place here the exclamation mark and press the tab or enter so here we go let's go ahead and change the title let's insert here css flexbox throughout this tutorial i'm going to use mozilla firefox actually my favorite browser is google chrome but in this case i can show you some things regarding flexbox in a better way so that's why i decided to use it for this video you can use either Google or Mozilla, both of them are great browsers. Let's run the file to the browser. For that I'm going to use a package called Live Server. It allows us to run the project to the browser live and make updates without refreshing the page each time. So you can install and use this package. Finally, let's place the editor and browser side by side. and get started. We're going to start with the container properties. First of all, let's create a div element, which actually will be the container. Inside the div element, I'm going to create several flex items. So let's open another div with classes item and item one. Then insert here the letter A Let's duplicate this line of code four times and change the class names and the content as well. We need item 2 with the letter B, then item 3, C, then the next one is going to be item 4 with the letter D, and finally, let's write here item 5 and the letter E. Okay, so you see that here we have just the letters. Let's go ahead and give the container and the item some styles. I'm going to use internal styling. We have to open style tags in the head element. And we can pass here the CSS code. At first, let's select container. Create some space at the top using margin top with a value of 50 pixels. Then also I'm going to create the space inside of the container using padding with values 20 pixels on top and bottom and 0 on the left and right sides. And finally change the background color. I'm going to use here color F19861. So here we have our container and now let's go ahead and select the items with a common class name item because I need the same styles for each item. So first of all let's increase the font size, make it 30 pixels. Then change background color. Use here 0, 6, A, F, 8, F. Then change the color, make it white. Also we need some space inside of the item using padding. Let's make it 30 pixels. Then create space around the item. Set margin to 10 pixels. And finally, let's align the text in the center. 
Okay, so everything is ready. And as remember, the first thing that we have to do is to set the display property to flex for the container. Let's save it and here we go. You see that the items are placed in a row. Just using a line of code, we got a kind of nice result. So the items act like the inline elements because, as we said, they are placed in a row. But the container itself behaves like a block level element. It means that it takes up the full width available on the page. Besides the flex value, we can use inline flex. In this case, the container behaves like the inline element. So it means that it takes up the width that is required to display the content. All right. Actually, we're going to use display flex. So let's get back it here and move on to the next property, which is a flex direction. Actually, this property sets the direction of items along the main axis. The flex items are followed to the direction of the main axis. Let's assign to this property a row. You see that nothing is changed because the row is the default value. We are able to reverse the items in a row and for that we just need to assign to it row reverse. So the items are reversed. As we know, by default, the main axis goes from left to right, but when we assign to the flex direction property row reverse, then it changes its direction and goes from right to left, and the items are followed to it accordingly. It seems that the first item A is placed as the last one, but actually it's not correct. It still maintains its position as the first item in a row. All right, the next value that we can assign to the flex direction property is column which actually places items in a column. So in this case, the main axis and cross axis change their positions. The main axis goes from top to bottom and the cross axis goes from left to right. So in case of the column, the items take up the full width that is available inside the container. If we make the browser larger, then the width of the flex items will increase because they take up the full width that is available. In the same way, we can use column reverse. And I believe you are guessing what will happen. So again, the main axis changes its direction. It goes from bottom to top and the items are followed to its new direction. All right, I'm going to set the value of the flex direction property to row. So if I make the browser smaller, then the size of the container will decrease according to the viewport. At the bottom of the page, the scroll bar will appear and actually it doesn't look nice. And also it will be the problem when we want to make our web page responsive. It happens because the default value of the flex wrap property is set to no wrap. So if we write here flex wrap, no wrap, then nothing will change. We will have the exact same result. But if we use wrap instead of no wrap then the items will wrap you see that we no longer have the scroll bar down below so when you make the browser smaller and the container doesn't have enough space the items will wrap instead of writing those two properties we can use a shortened way we just need to use flex flow property then the value of the flex direction row and then after that, the value of the flex wrap property wrap. So if I comment those lines out, then we will have the same result. All right, let's remove those comments and also assign to the flex wrap property no wrap and then comment flex flow out. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the next property of the flex container, which is justify content. The first thing that I want to mention is that this property works along the main axis. You see that the items are placed from left to right and actually it is a default position. So if I assign to the justify content property flex start, then the items will maintain their position. If we change the flex start into center, then the items will be placed in the center of the container. Also, we have flex end. 
which actually allows us to place the items on the right side of the container. All right, the next value that I want to describe is space between. So in case of space between, the first and the last items are placed at the edges of the container, and then the rest of the space is separated between the items evenly. We have here a little space at the edges of the container, and that's because of the margin it was set for the flex items at the beginning. So if we comment that out, then this little space will be removed. The next value is space around. It works in a similar way like space between, but there is one difference. The first and the last items are not placed at the edges of the container. Each of the items takes up the same amount of space on the left and right sides. So, for example, between A and B items we have the space that belongs to A and the space for B. The last value for the justify content property is space evenly. So in case of space evenly, we have the even space between the items. All right, so we have seen how the justify content property works in case of a flex direction row. And now it's interesting to see what happens in case of column. So you see that there is no space between the items. And the reason is that the container increases its height, which is required to display its content. So because of that, it doesn't matter if we write here space around instead of space evenly or any other value. So in order to see the difference between those values, let's set the height of the container to 700 pixels. Also, I'm going to set the width for the items to 70 pixels. And the last thing that I want to do is to get rid of this padding from here. So what I want to tell you is that when we change the flex direction from the row into the column, then the main axis changes its direction and now it goes from top to bottom. Because of that, Justify Content works along the main axis. We have the same effect that occurred in case of a row, but now it happens vertically. We will get the proper result if we use here space between or space evenly and also the rest of the values you can test it on your own again remember that justify content positions items along the main axis all right let's change back the column into a row so you see that the items are stretched from top to bottom and it happens because the next property which is align items is set to stretch by default. So you see that nothing is changed, the items are still stretched from top to bottom, so align items works almost in the same way as the justify content property, the only difference is that it actually works along the cross axis. And because of that, in case of a row, cross axis goes from top to bottom and the items are stretched from top to bottom as well. So as we said, it is a default value. Let's change it and use other values like flex start. So using flex start, the items are placed at the top edge of the container. If we want to center them, then we can use align items center. In order to place them at the bottom of the container, then for that we have to use flex end. The last possible value for the align items property is baseline. So if we use it, then the items will be placed in an exact way as it was in case of the flex start values. But in general, they do not work in the exact same way. In order to see the difference between them, I'm going to increase the font size of the first item. Let's select it and set its font size to 70 pixels. So if we take a look at the items carefully, then you will notice that the bottom edge of each flex item's content, which in this case is a letter, is placed along the imaginary line. So if we change the baseline into flex start, then those items will be aligned at the top edge of the container. So it's the main difference between baseline and the flex start. 
All right, let's comment this line out. So this stuff was about flex direction row. If we change it into column, then the main axis and the cross axis will change their directions and a line item property will work vertically. I don't want to waste time on testing again each of the values because I believe you already guess how they will work. All right, the last property that I want to demonstrate regarding flex container is a line content. Let's change the flex wrap from no wrap into wrap. Also make the browser smaller. Using a line content property, we can manage the position of wrapped items. By default, the value of the align content property is set to stretch. So if we write here stretch, then nothing will be changed. Besides that, we can use other different values like flex start, center. We have also flex end. Then space between, space around, and lastly, space evenly. All right, that's all about flex container properties. Let's move on and see how to deal with the flex items. So the first property that I'm going to show you is order. It actually allows us to change the order of the flex items without manipulating the HTML code. Let's go ahead and align the items in the center. Also, comment align content property out. By default, each flex item has the value of the order property set to zero. So if we assign to the item one order zero, then it won't change its position. But if we write here one instead of the zero, then the first item will be placed at the end of the row as the last one. It happened because the item A got a higher value than the other items have. Now I'm going to select item E, which has a class name, item 5, and I'm going to set order to minus 1. So if I save it, then the item E will be placed at the beginning of the row as the first item. The reason is that now it has the lowest order value. So as a conclusion, we can say that the item with a lower order value always stands in front of the other items. And in the same way, items with a higher order value stand back to other items. Also, as a note, just remember that the ordering of the flex items depends on the flex directions. All right, the next property regarding the flex items is align self. It actually works in the exact same way as the align items property, but as its name suggests, it is used for the specified items. By default, the align self property is set to auto. It means that it's related to its parent flex container properties, but if we want to stand out one specified item, for example, if we want to align item E at the top edge of the container, then we can use align self property with the value flex start. So you can see that the item 5 is placed at the top edge of the container. Also, we can use flex end, which will place the item at the bottom of the container. Besides flex start and flex end, we are able to use center, pace line and stretch. Let's test this last one. So you see that the item is stretched from top to bottom inside of the container. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the next property, which is flex grow. It actually allows items to occupy available free space inside the container. And also this property specifies how faster the flex item will grow relative to the rest of the items. I know that it sounds a bit complicated, so let's see what I mean. I'm going to comment this line out. Also get back here the margin. So if we make the browser wider, then you will see that the space between the items is growing. 
but the items themselves maintain their width. It happens because the flex grow property is set to zero by default. If we write here zero, then the same will happen. But if we change zero into one, then item E will start to grow when we make browser larger and it will occupy as much free space as it's available. All right, let's assign the same property to item one and set the value to one. So you can notice at a glance that the first and the last items are changing their sizes and they are growing as much as it is possible. But if we change the value for the first item and write, for example, five, then you will see that the both items grow. But if you look closely at them, you will notice that the item A is growing much faster than item E. And actually, we can say precisely that it's growing five times faster than item E. So we can conclude that by default, all the items have flex grow property set to zero, which means that they do not grow at all. But if we use at least one as the value, then they will start to grow and occupy as much space as it is available. All right, let's move on to the next property, which is flex shrink. It actually is the opposite property of the flex grow. I mean, it allows items to shrink as much as it is possible. At first, I'm going to comment the flex grow property out. And also, we need to set flex wrap to no wrap. Because as we know, the wrap does not allow items to shrink. In addition, I'm going to set width for item 1 and item 5 to 200 pixels. Actually, I'm doing that in order to see better the effect of the flex shrink property. So if we make the browser smaller, then the items will start to shrink. And it happens because by default the flex shrink property is set to 1. So if we assign to flex shrink property 1, then the same will happen. And in case of 0, the item won't shrink. Besides those values, we can manage how faster we want to shrink the items. So if we write here, for example, 5, then the item E will shrink 5 times faster. So actually, flex grow and flex shrink properties work in the similar, but in the opposite ways. All right, the next property is flex spaces. Let's comment flex shrink out. Actually, flex spaces specifies the actual length of the item. In length, we might think either width or height, and it depends on the flex direction of the container. By default, the flex spaces property is set to auto. So you see that nothing is changed. The item has the same width and height. Now let's assign to it, let's say 100 pixels. We are doing that for item 5, which is E, so let's focus on that item before I save. So you can see that the width of item E is changed and it became 100 pixels. So if we inspect the page and check the width of item 5, then we will get 160 pixels. And that's because of the padding, which is set initially for all the items to 30 pixels. So if we get rid of it, then the width of item 5 will become 100 pixels. As you see, for item 5, the width is defined as 200 pixels. But when we use width and flex basis properties simultaneously, then the value of the width is overwritten by the flex basis value. It seems that the flex basis specifies the width of the item, but actually it's not quite correct. It works depending on the main axis. So if we change the flex direction of the container to column, then the flex basis property will specify the height of the item. And if we check it, you will see that height is 100 pixels. All right, the last property that I'm going to discuss in this video is flex. Actually, it is a shortened way to use flex grow, flex shrink and flex basis simultaneously. 
Let's comment this line out and also make flex direction row. So as the first value, we need to indicate flex grow, which as you remember, by default is set to zero. Then we need to write the value of the flex shrink property and by default it is one. And the third one is a flex basis and its default value is auto. So as you see, it's really a shorter way. All right. It was all about flex item properties and actually we are done with this little crash course regarding CSS Flexbox. Hopefully you got some knowledge about Flexbox and enjoyed this video. If so, then please thumbs up, comment below, share the video, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified about coming tutorials. Okay, see you next time.